being able to earn a living from growing flowers may sound like a dream to many people. After all, what could be better than being surrounded by nature and profiting from its beauty? In this video, we are going to take a look at the potential of starting a cut flower business with bulbs. We have other videos detailing the ins and outs of growing perennials and other flowers for profit, so be sure to check those out too. Stick around until the end of the video if you'd like this information in a copy of our ebook. With that in mind, let's get started. Bulbous flowers grow from an underground storage organ. This organ, the bulb, is a modified root from which roots and the flower and leaf stems grow. There are other types of modified roots, including tubers and rhizomes. While these do not fit the exact definition of a bulb, they are going to be included in this video because many aspects of their production remain the same. Arguably, one of the most well-known surges in bulb popularity was in the Netherlands in the 1600s. Tulip mania captured the nation, creating what is believed to be the first economic bubble. At its highest, the asking price for the Semper Augustus bulb was 10,000 guilders, the equivalent of over 7 million rand or $500,000 in today's money. The bubble soon popped, and bulb prices plummeted. So don't expect to earn the same money from the bulbs you can grow these days. This doesn't however mean that you can't make a nice profit from farming flower bulbs. It has been reported that a bulb grower can earn up to $20 an hour, even if all you have is a spacious back garden. When it comes to bulb production, you can either purchase the bulbs and harvest the flowers, or grow the bulbs themselves and sell these to other farmers. Depending on which avenue you decide to go down, some production aspects will change. In this video, we are going to focus on growing the bulbs for the purpose of harvesting cut flowers. Do not go into this process with your head in the sand. Find out what flowers are popular and easy to care for before you purchase your bulbs. Briefly, here are some ideas for you to start off with. Some popular bulbs include tulips, lilies, narcissus, and amaryllis. Irises, lily of the valley and cannas could be ideal rhizomes for you. And if you would like to go for tuberous roots and stems, look at flowers like dahlias and ranunculus. As most bulbs are easy to grow, you will likely not require a greenhouse for your plants. An empty spot in your garden or property will be just fine, but make sure you don't choose to grow finicky bulbs that require an exact temperature regimen. Make sure the spot you choose receives full sun, at least 6 hours during the day as a general rule. You must also prep your beds before you plant your bulbs. This means turning the soil, adjusting the pH if need be and applying soil amendments like fertilizers. You need to remove all weeds and other plants too. If possible, you can solarize your soil. This is a form of sterilizing large beds by placing a black tarpaulin over the surface during hot days. As the soil heats up, any lurking pests or diseases should be taken care of. One of the most important factors in flower bulb production is a concept known as forcing. This will allow you to initiate flowering even when the bulbs are grown out of the usual blooming season. If you can master the technique of forcing, then you will be able to supply the public with flowers which are high in demand but low in supply, allowing you to receive a high revenue for your harvest. Different species of bulbs can be forced in different ways, such as exposing them to higher or lower than normal temperatures, supplying them with more or less light and even altering fertilizer applications. So, depending on the bulbs you grow, you need to research techniques for forcing those specific types. A good planning schedule will help to keep you on track with your planting and harvesting dates. Because there are so many factors to consider before you plant your bulbs, something which is unique to every variety as well, you need to take this all into account long before you plant your first crop. Research the typical temperature trends in your area, do some soil sampling and make any necessary amendments, and most importantly, try to find buyers for your product before you harvest. Whilst no amount of preparation will guarantee a hassle-free growing season, it may help you to foresee potential problems and solve them before they become a major issue. Some bulbs can be quite expensive to source in the first place. Before you take the plunge and purchase from the usual stockists, try to make some deals with local growers or markets to purchase any unsold stock at a fraction of the price. Keep in mind though that many bulbs have royalties that need to be paid for you to sell the flowers harvested from them. Therefore, if you can find royalty-free varieties those should be your first option, especially in your first couple of years. 
you can also save money by letting your plants grow after they have flowered. This will let them invest energy into the bulbs, rhizomes, or tubers. At the end of the season, you will be able to divide these structures, dry them and then plant many more bulbs the following season without having to buy any new plant material. It is also recommended that you begin your first season with three or four different flower varieties, or at least a few different colors of the same flower. Try and find unique cultivars that might set you apart from other bulb producers. If you are a newbie grower, you can't expect to compete with the 100 hectare commercial growers. Instead focus on producing a higher quality, unique crop. You will also have far less overheads compared to the large scale growers, so do not feel too overwhelmed. Rather start small with a few varieties, learn the ropes and gain experience, and expand as you gain confidence and revenue. One of the greatest advantages of bulb farming is how easy they are to grow, so you need not be the most experienced horticulturalist to produce a good crop. While most bulbs are perennials, if you find the current varieties you are growing do not sell well, you can simply choose other cultivars to grow the next season. This means you can easily follow consumer preferences and remain relevant. As we mentioned before, you need to decide if you are going to grow bulbs to sell to other growers, or if the cut flowers are your ultimate end goal. Deciding between the two is important because the production aspects will differ. However, this doesn't mean you can't do both. By growing the production bulbs and the flowers, you can market your harvests to two completely different markets. Therefore, if one avenue is struggling it is possible to make up for it if the other is succeeding. It is recommended that you still select one focus in the beginning and consider starting another after you have gained experience. As with any new business venture, there are drawbacks that need to be considered. As we mentioned before, bulbs can be expensive to buy in the first place. Prices can be further increased when you are charged royalties on new varieties. To mitigate this, try to keep your overheads as low as possible. Mixing your own fertilizers, mastering the art of online marketing, and targeting a niche market can help you overcome this problem. Like most cut flowers, you will have to manage the short shelf life. If flowers are not properly handled, they will decline in quality very quickly and your profits will be non-existent. To mitigate this problem, follow these guidelines. 1. Harvest your flowers in the early mornings or evenings. This way, you can avoid the heat stress that can be caused during the day. 2. Have buckets full of water ready and place your stems in the buckets as soon as they are cut. Then keep the buckets in a cool, shady area. 3. Maintaining the cold chain is a must. If you don't have cool trucks to transport your flowers, at least make sure you have air-conditioned vehicles to do so. 4. Use preservative solutions in the water, even a sprinkling of sucrose and a slight dash of bleach will help maintain the quality of the flowers. And that brings us to the end of our video showing you the ins and outs of growing bulbous flowers for profit. Remember to check out the description for the link to our ebook and we will see you all in the next video.